my motto in business is failure is not an option. <laughs> so whenever we are faced with, with things like that, it's just what are we going to do next to make it work? Welcome to the Simple Marketing Solutions Podcast, where we help small business owners simplify and automate their marketing process. I'm your host, Amita, and I'm here to share actionable ideas and tips that will help you to grow your business. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned marketer, we have something just for you. Join us every Wednesday as we explore the latest trends and techniques in digital marketing, and I'll share my insights along with expert guests who have amazing tips and insights to share with you as well for any marketing budget. So don't forget to subscribe, leave us a review because every review that you leave is going to allow us to spread the word further. And if you've got friends or colleagues that you feel would get value out of listening to this podcast, please do share the episode with them. Hello, Melissa, and welcome to the Simple Marketing Solutions Podcast. It's great to have you here. I am so interested to hear more about your business, Graphica, and how long you've been in business. It always is so wonderful when I hear that women have established their business and have been there for over that 10-year mark. Because I think that that is, you know, that's really that hurdle that people try and reach that five-year mark and then the 10-year mark. And once you've done that, you know, you're solid and things are working well for you. But we're going to be talking about, you know, the good and the bad in business. So before we do get into all of that, I would love for you to just share a little bit about yourself and your business and how you got there. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I started my business, yes, 14 years ago, so it has been a while and it hasn't been obviously a very steady journey. You know, there's hurdles along the way, but I started the business, uh, I used to work in an advertising agency and once when I had my first child and then my second child, I realised that working in the corporate corporate world and working very long hours just was not the balance uh, that I wanted in my life. So after my second child, I decided it was time to start the business. And um, it really was just born from being guilty, feeling guilty as a mum and, mm. you know, dropping them at childcare and having that guilt when you walk away. So it was born from that. And it started in my garage, literally in a, in a bedroom or a room of my home that uh, I just started calling clients and, and it all stemmed from there. Wow. You know, and that's amazing to hear that it can be as simple as just moving it, your business into your home and starting from there. It doesn't always have to be a fancy office to begin with, but that the thing you mentioned of guilt when it comes to not being able to be there for your young kids as they're growing up and having that time, I know that there's a lot of parents out there that feel the same way and are looking for, you know, ways of changing that because it doesn't feel right for them. For you, it's a big challenge though, isn't it? To take that step and leave paid work, knowing that you're getting your paycheck every month um, to start your own business. How did you overcome that fear? Yeah, so that was probably the greatest challenge, I think, because I have I had never been unemployed. I started working when I was, you know, 14 and nine months. The, the, the moment you could start working, I have always been employed. So to take that step, goodness, uh, I, I, I think it was just deciding what was more important to me at the time. And work-life balance really was my driver. Uh, it, it was difficult to cut off the money, yes, but I think that really was what drove me at the time to keep going because if it wasn't that 
drive to bring in the money. And initially, it was probably my business was probably driven by having to bring the money in to keep out, you know, pay the mortgage and the family and all those things. Mm-hmm. And then once that started to develop further, obviously the the passion of what I do in design kept me going further mm-hmm. and further. But that mm-hmm. initial step, oh look, uh, I it's been it's been a while to be honest, but I the support of my family, mm-hmm. uh, the support of my husband was crucial because I I do remember dropping the business idea a few times and it was always oh look it's not the right time it's not the right time but I think he saw that feeling that I was feeling leaving the kids and I just couldn't function it it, it was Mm. yeah it it was stressful it's quite stressful when you've got small children I mean now they're teenagers so it's much much easier but when they're little it's yeah it, it probably was what drove me to keep keep the business alive. Mm, mm. And I think that when you see that that's where your values lie, you know, that family life, that family stability, then it's easier to have that drive to make whatever it is that you're in business wise or employment wise work to match that family value that you've got. And what I've seen um so many times though is that it is easy to just push that down and think that there'll be time in the future there'll be time in the future and we just keep plodding along yet internally we feel a bit broken Mm -hmm. because it doesn't match what we want from our life oh most definitely and you know we talk about this even in the business that I do which is branding Mm. Branding, and I know I ask this to my to my clients all the time. You know, what is that one thing that drives you every single day uh, that is not linked to money? I always ask them that question. You know, if money mm. wasn't an option and you were driven to do what you do, and yeah, for me, it's that work life balance, finding that time with my family that you'll probably never get back again. Because now, yeah. look at that there, <laughs> time to you know go off and do their own things so yeah. yes you're yeah. right there is the net the time in your mind the time may never be right or you know it may be one day mm. but I feel like once you've made that step and stepped over that line of fear and moved into just starting just starting somewhere you know mm. whether or not it's just like I did pick up the phone back then that was for, you know email and like, yeah biggest thing but I would even go around to the clients and just knock on doors and pass them a postcard or a flyer and say hi I'm you know just started a business this is what mm. I do and this is how I can help so mm. it's just mm. stepping across that line is the key yeah absolutely overcoming the fear mm. and being you know 14 years in business for you lasting this long because there's been a lot of ups and downs over the last 14 years you know, both economically, um, within the country, within the world, there's been a lot of changes. And also, you know, in terms of graphic design, there's, again, been huge shifts in technology over the last 10 years, especially. What for you has been the secret to lasting this long? Yeah, so I believe that there's probably a few things that have helped me along the way. Obviously, over 14 years, my business has developed and changed and grown. So from me being on my own to now having a team of people. But I think the main thing is having the ability to adapt and change to those environments that we are often faced with. And and one of those, obviously, was the COVID crisis Mm. that we all faced and at that time, I had edu- educated my clients in in saying to them, you know, this is the time where you have that downtime that you never thought about or had the time for to update your brand or your business. Like there, there are mm. times that we can pivot and change in those times of crisis. Uh, you know, another thing that I find really valuable that I think is the key is educating myself. I am a little bit of a self-development junkie, uh, <laughs> so I do do whatever. It, you know, I always think that you're never, you can never learn enough. 
No. So educating myself, uh, putting myself through courses, networking events, you know, just pushing yourself outside of those comfort zones are always yeah. uh, a key, I think, a key to my success. And, mm. and educating myself also in my profession. There's all, mm. like you said, there's so many things that have changed in our area of expertise. And, you know, yeah. one focus that we believe that we are ahead of the rest on is not just being a graphic designer because that is sometimes the veneer of mm. the business but it's just educating our clients on the importance of brand and branding yourself rather than just having a pretty picture for yeah the case of your business so yeah, yeah so I and think um you know my motto in business is failure is not an option so whenever we are faced with, with things like that, it's just what are we going to do next to make it work? Mm, mm. Yeah. You know, I think that that's a really great motto to have. And as business owners, no matter what size you have in terms of your business, or even if you don't have a business in life in general, you know, failure is not an option is... I think something that we all need to just remind ourselves of, um, because even when something doesn't go the way that we thought it was going to go, it doesn't mean that you failed, but you've if you look at it as an opportunity to learn from that and then just adapt and use that information to do it better, to do it more efficiently or to, you know, do it the right way the next time. Uh, for um, sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's something that I've learned along the way too is, you know, we may fail, we may do things wrong, or it may not be the right option for us as a business or our clients, but mm. we always step back and say, okay, well, what what did we learn from that? Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it really is important. I think that if we're continuing to learn, and like you said, you know, you're always affirm in learning new things if we learn from our experiences as well as learning from new material that we're reading and taking in then we become better tuned with the clients that we work with as well and who we want in our world and how we want to be put how we want to present ourselves as well as a business as a person yes, so definitely. yeah yeah and, yes mm -hmm. No, go. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, I mean, that flows through our life as well, not just our business. So, you know, when I say failure is not an option, some days, we, you know, yeah. there are days when I don't want to go to work. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, I just don't want to talk to people. Uh, and that's okay. And I have, as I have grown through my business, I've realised that that's okay. And I will give myself permission to have a day off and not mm. feel guilty. There are days when I do feel terrible about, not wanting to go to that meeting but yeah you know the day after is always much better <laughs> exactly exactly and you know that comes to the next question that I had which um is around looking after yourself your own well-being your own mental health mm -hmm. and I think that that's something that's really come to the forefront through COVID of when we're running our business, you know, how do we look after ourselves? And you said that you're a bit better at taking those days off. Mm -hmm. Are there any other tools or um, things that you have in place in your life that help support that? So I value my health and well-being. That is something that is really important to me because I feel like if I am not my best, then mm. I can't be a great mum, I can't be a great wife or a, a leader. So one thing that I value in my life is, is health exercise. I make a point of putting that into my every single part of my day. So the first thing I do every morning is I either go for a run or a walk or yoga or Pilates, whatever that is. So that's my time. Yeah. Uh, another practice that I think is really important for my health and well-being is journaling I have a, you know I've been journaling since it was called a diary <laughs> uh, so look I have to say that it's not a habit that uh, I sometimes don't 
you know, journal every single day, but I feel like mm. it times when you're often stuck or feel like you need to just get it off your chest or journaling is just um, a fabulous habit to get into. Mm. Um, so just finding that balance, finding mm. the balance between, you know, your working hours as well. I, I feel like mm. the work from home arrangement and COVID was definitely a, a, some great things came out of COVID and one of them was that work from home scenario which was never an option prior to that I feel like it just didn't exist and now it feels like it's the norm so I think if you can have that balance between whether or not you own your own business or do work for someone else having that work from home day is would definitely help looking Mm. after health and well-being for sure Mm. yes I think that that definitely is a positive that's come out of Mm. the pandemic Yes. Um, and like you said, having the routine of, you know, your morning routine starts with exercise and movement and having set hours with work. Cause I know that that's often, I was talking to somebody else that I was interviewing for a podcast and, you know, we had this conversation about time and time management mm-hmm. and that it creates more flexibility when you do have structure in your day with blocking out time. Um, you realize how much more time you actually do have for other things. So, Without a doubt. And, and that's interesting because when you, you first start a business, and I am guilty of this, is that you feel like you need to work and work. And, you know, I would yep. <laughs> work in the morning, put the kids to bed, work again, and it'd be like it's a never-ending cycle of work. Um, and as I think now as my business has grown, I definitely have that time. You know, 9 mm. to 3, I do school hours, that is, and I shut it off after yeah. that. And, and structure is 100% the key Mm, definitely Mm. you know and I think um from a time perspective as well like you were saying at the beginning you feel like you have to constantly be on with Mm -hmm. work however what I've noticed and I I've been the same I'm guilty you know (laughs) of working crazy hours my husband who who's employed you know will always say to me you work so much, you're always working, you know, Um, and I think that there's time and place for that, um, but it can't become the norm, because when that becomes the norm, there will be a stage where you hit that wall, and you realize, I can't keep doing this, and it starts to impact other areas of your life as well, Um, which is never what we want so having that work-life balance or time that you've set aside for work and time that you set aside for personal life is so important to feeling fulfilled in your day as well Uh yes um and Melissa I wanted to ask you with with your business have there what has been the biggest win for you? The biggest win? Win. Win. Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Um, so there's a few wins, I guess. One of the wins for me is obviously managing to stay in business for so long. That is a huge win. I, I'm quite proud yes. of myself with that achievement. Uh, another huge win has been just some of the the clients that I have worked with and the opportunities that I've had within my business. And they have come through just networking and being out there. So I had a fabulous opportunity to represent. I was one of four business owners um, to to be the representative for all small businesses. Uh, And I was invited to sit a roundtable discussion at Parliament House, which was wow. amazing. Yeah, so that was with Senator Cash at the time. Okay. So I, and that just came from attending a, a local business network that then asked me to be part of a, a, a video series called Ahead for Business. And that was all about looking after your health and well being. Mm. And then that rolled into uh, being invited to Parliament House. So for wow. me, that has been a huge, 
feather in my cap because that opened up so many other opportunities mm. for me to appear on podcasts, for example, or to be, you know, have write-ups in the newspaper. So from one small win can mm. come lots of bigger, bigger wins. So I yeah. feel like that has been a, a great option for us. Yeah, that's fantastic. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Yes, that was a, a fantastic opportunity. I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it, it's great because it's a win for you, but it's also a win for other businesses at the same time. So that's always pretty special when we can have oh, that sure. type of impact. Yeah. yeah. So that discussion um, brought up, it just led to a whole uh it's a website now that's been developed for small business owners oh, wow. uh, and it's all around looking after your health and well-being because traditionally it was just mm. health and well-being and, and looking after your mental health for everybody but it was there was never a focus on small business owners yes. so this was focused on small business so I'm happy to share that link with you later yeah and you yeah can... absolutely I'll put yeah. it in the show notes because I think it'll be really useful for it's everybody to tool. have access to that yes yeah. Sure. Um, and, you know, on that topic of health and well-being and business owners, you're right. It's not something that we often see. And it's something that I'm really strong, strongly passionate about as well, um, is your own health and well-being has to come above your business and above everything else. Because as a business owner, if we're not looking after ourselves, then how are we going to run our business effectively and efficiently and support the clients that we have? So, yeah, Absolutely. really important. And that's, yeah. that's our philosophy at Graphica as well is all of our staff are uh, not all mums, but I'll say that they have the option to work around their families. Family mm. is our priority. Uh, and if that is you know, if you need to work those hours around your family, then that's what I believe in and, and yeah. I back you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's still doable. You know, I think that there's a very traditional way of looking at business and how it should operate, which doesn't fit in today's model where you've got, you know, both parents working um, and trying to still run a household and all of that you can do so much more with the time that you dedicate to work in a shorter amount of time. It doesn't have to be that set nine to five. Oh, if you can work around your family and your kids and life in general, <laughs> it's amazing how much you can get done in shorter amounts oh, of time. I, agree. Too. I, I believe that the, you know, the, the six hours or, you know, the nine to three that yeah. my staff work, are so, they're so efficient in that time because they know that they're, they have to finish at three so rather than yeah around to five which I remember being in that world and mm. so often you know trying to fill your day with things exactly that probably are yeah. irrelevant <laughs> that's it I think we do tend to waste a lot of time mm. in those situations absolutely <laughs> um and Melissa before we wrap up I wanted to ask you you know in terms of your business being out there helping businesses with their branding, what would your advice be to business owners in that space? Uh, in regards to brand? Branding. branding. Yeah, mm. so it's funny because the word brand has been so loosely used recently mm. and quite often misunderstood by a lot of business owners. And it's I could say that, I get a phone call a week, people saying to me, oh, can you just create me a brand? But what they're really asking is, can you create me a logo with some fonts and some colours and potentially a style guide, which yeah. is not what branding is at all. So branding is, and, and I love this definition, it's what people, the meaning that people put behind your what you're offering. So it's the, the feelings and the emotion that people have towards your offering services. So, which is quite scary for some business owners, because if it's the feelings and the emotions of our consumers, sometimes we don't have control over that. 
or we, mm. we can't control it because it's what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. So the business of branding, which is what I'm in, is managing those, managing the meaning of what mm. we're putting out there. Mm. Uh, so, and, and that it, we, we do often hold workshops for our clients and to discover and how to work out how to manage that and how to tell those stories through your socials and how you speak to people and how you build your brand with a personality because that's mm. what it's all about is giving your brand a personality and and treating it like a human sometimes I tell them uh, and giving it that tone of voice uh, and and the logo is just the icing on the cake really it's that veneer that we are showing to the world it's the tip of the iceberg and it's you know above the water we see that tiny bit of the iceberg which is the logo and the website and all the beautiful things but underneath there are all the bits and pieces that your brand is made up of your mission your yeah. vision your values your personality and tone so there's a lot to branding yeah yeah we, and it's a good to. reminder to people you know that there is a major difference to just the the superficial visual things that people see in terms of your logo your colors your fonts and what it really means when you're talking about branding and coming back to those values, that vision that you have for your business, how you want to be perceived, and mm -hmm. that you can have an influence on people from the story that you tell and how you tell that. So again, coming back to the communication, right, yeah. is so important. Without a doubt. And we tell our clients that all the time is to sometimes when you find yourself, because a lot of clients say to me, how do I put content out there that's authentic to my business? Yeah. And I always say to them, well, go back to the purpose, go back to that mission and the vision that you set in the beginning. And, and often business, small business owners have never gone through that process. Mm. They start a business and they've got their fancy logo or little logo, whatever they've created, and, yep. and they're on their way. But it's really important to run through that process. And our philosophy mm. at Graphica is that all small businesses should have access to big brand thinking. So we do offer that to small business owners. That's okay. our fantastic. Yeah. Um, I will definitely pop your details into the show notes as well because I'm sure that there'll be a lot of business owners where their interest is going to be peaked now with, you know, knowing that it's not just a little logo that's going to get them to where they want with their business. It's a lot more that's important. So thank you so much, Melissa. Yeah. And thank you for being here today and being open and honest and sharing, you know, your journey as a business owner, owner over the last 14 years congratulations again for all your wins and for overcoming those challenges through the years as well thank you for having me it's been a pleasure sign up have some fun let me know what you think and follow me at holistic vision consultancy you'll find me on there um, and i really look forward to following you on there as well so until next week my friends happy marketing Speak to you then.